Every my house kills. Which is easier to say, judge not. Your sins are not forgiven. Judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. With what measure you judge, you shall be judged. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Good evening, friends. Welcome yet again to another episode of Karek Bhav. The biblical text that we ponder over today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 5 to 12. It says, When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They said to one another, It is because we have brought no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And to you belongs praise of God, Bhagavad Here Christ warns his disciples to beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Leaven is employed here as a metaphorical expression for teaching. We are urged to be conscious of the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Thus, we sing in the Kolo of Monday Vespers, I quote, Our Lord called his apostles and commanded them, Do not go in the way of the unbelievers. Do not enter into the house of the Samaritans. And do not draw near to the teaching of the Pharisees. Anathema is their teaching. Unquote. The placing of this passage is significant. This conversation of Jesus with his disciples happens after Jesus confronts a rule set forth by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They tempt Jesus to demonstrate a sign from the heaven, intending a supernatural display of power. We should take cognizance of the fact that any attempt to tempt Christ, either through our words or deeds, is inherently demonic and Christ will never succumb to these temptations. For it is written, You shall not tempt your Lord your God. Furthermore, it is such a shame that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were never satisfied with Christ's prodigious healings of every sickness and every malady among the people and other incredible works which he performed. Christ has always appended our stereotypical concepts of power. He replaced the palace with a stable, throne with manger, exquisite robes with shabby swaddling clothes, and crown with cross. Christ does not explicitly perform something extraordinary. Rather, he unveils the power of powerlessness and the sanctity of the defiant. As George MacDonald writes, I quote, With divine alchemy, God turns not only water into wine, but common things into radiant mysteries. Yes, every meal into a Eucharist, and the jaws of death into an outgoing gate. Unquote. To ignore the earthly miracles for an apparent supernatural sign from the heaven, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, is a fallacious idea. The earth is filled with the miracles of Christ. We just need the eyes to see them. For instance, creation is a miracle. Grace is a miracle. The birth of a child is a miracle. The germination of a tree from a tiny seed is a miracle, and so on and so forth. After refusing to succumb to the temptation of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Christ then meets his disciples and instructs them to beware the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees and Sadducees were highly legalistic in their spirituality and religiosity. They preferred to be enslaved to the letter of the law, reprimanding the freedom offered by the truth 
that is Christ. The law should give way to the truth, for Christ fulfills the law. As Proclus writes in his homily on Pascha, I quote, Let the Jews forsake the old leaven and take up the new Tao of the truth, unquote. Adhering obstinately to the letter of the law often results in bloodshed. As it is written, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For we read in the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 15, verses 32 to 36, how a man was killed just for picking up few sticks on the Sabbath. On the other hand, we see how Christ, transcending the letter of the law, brings salvation to the woman caught in adultery. Being sinless, he was the only one qualified to throw a stone at her, yet he did not, reminding us that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. This proves the fact that the law is always subservient to the truth. That is the reason why the scripture says, No one is justified before God by the law, for the one who is righteous will live by faith. Galatians 3.11 This is also one of the reasons before reading the scriptures we pray Open the eyes of my heart, O Lord, that I may see wondrous things out of thy law. Laws, or more emphatically the scriptures, are meant to be read through the eyes of our heart, illumined by Christ, for he is the light. Reading through our normal eyes, we would only see myths and fables. This purification of our senses is achieved through prayer. We have seven offices of prayer a day namely Vespers, Compline, Night Vigil, which includes four cowboys, Matins, Third Hour, Sixth Hour and Ninth Hour. Together, this makes ten prayers, including the four cowboys of the Night Vigil. These ten prayers are meant for the purification of our five external senses, which you already know, as well as five internal senses, namely intellect, intuition, imagination, memory and reason. It is only when our senses are illumined by the grace of God will we be able to discern and conquer the temptations of the devil. For Saint Mark the ascetic remarks, I quote, The devil makes small sins seem smaller in our eyes, for otherwise he cannot lead us to greater evil, unquote. Christ accuses his disciples of little faith for they see but do not perceive. This should not be considered as an accusation alone, but a fact. All our faith is little, incomplete and partial. As St. Paul writes, For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. 1 Corinthians 13, 9-10 It is only in Christ where the fullness of faith dwells, and therefore we are incomplete without it. It is interesting to note that Christ compares the teachings of Pharisees and Sadducees to leaven. The imagery of leaven is of something proportionately small and therefore able to be thought of as apparently of minor significance. So much so that in the early stages, its presence in the Tao is invisible. Nevertheless, over time, it totally transforms the situation in a manner that will gradually become evident. The teachings of Pharisees and Sadducees would appear proportionately small as the leaven, but over time, it would corruptly ferment our thoughts. Moreover, one would be so foolish to settle for a raw leaven when we have the opportunity to eat the bread of life itself brought down from heaven, that is Christ, in and through the Holy Eucharist. It is fascinating to see Christ using the leaven imagery as a negative counterpart to denote the kingdom of heaven by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was leavened. Matthew 30, 33. Dear friends, I conclude. Now, 
it is up to us to decide which leaven we would want to associate with. If we associate with the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, we would be prisoners of the law. But if we associate with the leaven of the kingdom of heaven, we can cherish the freedom offered by Christ, the truth. May God strengthen us to make the right choice consistently so that our habit becomes our nature. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God.